So what's going on folks? We are back here out at the R-Pod. We are going to be doing a pretty cool demonstration today of an accessory that was added to the Durango that will be towing this unit. A lot of people with mid-size SUVs or even full-size SUVs often need some way to level out their ride and we installed a very creative solution on the Durango that I think a lot of you might be interested in. So right up front here near the VIN, you can see that this R-Pod has a 2,966 pound dry weight. And on the side, you can see that it has a 3,836 pound gross vehicle weight rating, of which 853 pounds are cargo capacity. So as it sits right now, you're going to have about 300 to 350, maybe 375 pounds worth of tongue weight that will transfer to the back of the Durango, right on the hitch. And depending on how you load down the trailer, you may have more than that. So let's say you have all sorts of accessories in this front storage compartment. Let's say you have a new mattress inside. You replace the real thin mattress that comes with it with a much thicker memory foam mattress. Let's say you have all your clothes and whatever supplies you bring with you on the front, as well as you have stuff in the back of your truck. Let's say the Durango is loaded up with mountain bikes or accessories and things like that. All of that actually counts as tongue weight if it rests behind the rear wheels of the Durango and it's in front of the wheels on the trailer. So any weight like that's going to weigh down on the trailer. That's why it's important to have a weight distribution hitch as well as a method of sway control, but more importantly, to try to level out your ride as best possible. This is the RP190 R-Pod, which means the interior length of this unit is about 19 feet long. If you take into account the front A-frame section and the rear bumper, you're looking at a total of about 23 feet long. And there is no rear bumper on this unit, but there is a spare tire carrier, which extends off the back, shoot, probably a good 20 inches. One of the nice things about an R-Pod is that it's narrower than your typical travel trailer. So an R-Pod is only about 7 feet wide versus your typical 8 feet wide units that you might normally see. And a benefit to that is the towability, the fact that you'll be able to see around it easier. It centralizes the weight more so in between the tires versus over the tires. Now the downside, of course, is that it is a little narrower, so it takes away a little bit of your interior space. Okay, so we're about to back the Durango up to the trailer. We're not gonna need to put the sway control system or any of the weight distribution stuff in place right now. Basically what we're gonna do at this point is just hitch it up, take some measurements before the trailer's lowered down onto it, and then take some measurements after. Once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and level the system out. Now, what he has installed on here is an airlift airbag system that actually goes inside of the coil springs. That system enables you to inflate and separate the coils, kind of spread them apart, so you're able to level your vehicle out when you have a heavier load from the back, similar to this setup right here. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna back the vehicle up. We're gonna go and hitch it up and start putting some weight down on the back. Stop, right there, perfect. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and measure from the ground to the bottom of the fender right here is 33 and one quarter inch. Once we drop the trailer on, we're gonna remeasure and see exactly where that's at. So it looks like the vehicle lowered about half an inch. We're at about 32 and three quarters of an inch. So yeah, we only dropped about a half an inch with the load. Um, what Airlift recommends to do is to put the bags at 30 PSI before you put the load on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and unhitch the trailer. We're gonna crank the bags up to 30 PSI with the wireless remote. He has the kit and actually purchased the additional air compressor setup so he can control his height remotely. Once we disconnect, we'll load the bags with 30 PSI, reconnect the trailer to it and see how it sits. Okay, go ahead and crank it up to 30 pounds. You can hear the compressor kick on. So now we're gonna take another measurement now that the airbags are aired up to 30 PSI. And it looks like it raised the back of the truck up a little bit more 
than a quarter of an inch. So it's higher than 33 and a half now. So let's go ahead and drop the trailer down and see where it stops. So it seems with the trailer on now, we have a quarter inch total drop from before we inflated the airbags. Um, so overall impact is about a half an inch and it's really only sitting a quarter of an inch lower than without the airbags. So it has helped a little bit. It definitely has uh, limited the amount of sag on the back. And more importantly, it's gonna help control the ride when you're driving with it because it's gonna keep it from bouncing excessively. Here's the setup from the side. And as you can see, it sits a little bit more level than it did before. So you have really a few benefits from this setup. It better supports the weight of the trailer hitch on the back of the Durango. Number two, it's gonna decrease sway because it's gonna help reduce that side to side effect that you're gonna get whenever wind is impacting this rig going down the road. Number three, it's going to give it a little bit less bounce when you go over bumps. You're not gonna have quite the porpoising effect from the truck to the trailer. And it's really just a convenient kit to install. If you wanna just get the airbag set up and manually inflate them with a, with a tire pump or whatever you wanna use, it's only about a $75, $80 kit. If you wanna get it plus the wireless air controller that he went with, you're gonna pay about $300 for the wireless air controller in addition to the airbag setup. So because he really hasn't taken this out yet and used it, we are doing a quick walk around, just showing him the basic process of checking to make sure all his lights function properly, that his turn signals work, and that he is ready to go. Check the tire pressure, everything's good there. Checked all of his clearance lights and the side markers. Everything looks really good. So we're about to take the Durango out with the airbags. Right off the bat, you can feel it's a little bit firmer in the back when you hit the bumps. Feels like it recovers much quicker versus bounces. And that's going through the bumpy parking lot that we were just in. If you can tell by that flag right there, we have a pretty stiff crosswind going on. So this is really ideal conditions to tow a trailer to check to see how the sway control hitch is working. So he was just telling me that you can really feel the wind versus when you're not hauling a trailer. And that's actually a good thing for him to kind of understand and get used to while he's just practicing with the trailer and, and towing it. We're getting about a 20 mile an hour crosswind, and that's giving them a real sensation of how to control um, how wind affects a trailer. That's not necessarily sway. Wind pressing up against the side of your vehicle and your trailer, again, is gonna be a little bit different than sway. Sway is where your trailer is actually trying to kind of control your vehicle. In this case, it's more or less just a side pressure that's pushing against the side of the vehicle. I think we're going into the wind now, so you probably won't feel it as much. So for some reason, the trailer brake controller isn't finding the trailer. So it's getting power. We used the harness that goes directly into the factory harness to connect it. So it should just be working. We have the trailer connected to the seven way in the back, but for some reason it's not recognizing that there's a trailer. So we're gonna have to figure out what's going on with that. But what I was explaining to him is, if you start to feel sway, if you start to feel your trailer kind of getting wobbly on you where it's doing this thing or the back of it's doing this and it's, it's transferring that to the vehicle, when your trailer brakes are working, the best way to get out of a sway condition is not to hit the brakes on your vehicle. It's to let off of the gas, basically start coasting, and then to gently apply your trailer brakes. 
what that'll do is it'll cause your trailer to slow down, align itself, and it will pull the truck back into alignment as well so you regain control of the vehicle. So again, what you need to do is let off of the gas. Basically, don't hit the accelerate anymore. Don't hit the brakes on the vehicle and then gently apply your trailer brake controller and that should bring the trailer and truck back into alignment. So once again, we have a side a crosswind coming in from our left going to our right. And he's gonna kind of get a feel what it's like driving through it. And again, the winds are between 20 and 25 miles an hour. So it's a good representation of a, you know, fairly strong crosswind. That's definitely not strong compared to if you're up in Wisconsin or Montana where you can get 60 mile an hour crosswinds. But down here, you know, that's a good example of what you're gonna go through on a normal basis while you're towing. So overall, the system works really well. I'll put a link in the description of the video if you're interested in this airlift airbag system that works with coil sprung rear suspension. This is going to be what you're going to use for pretty much all of your coil sprung SUVs as well as pickup trucks like the new Rams that have coil springs instead of leaf springs. It works very effectively and really what it's designed to do is help dampen the amount of bounce you have kind of acting as a shock absorber. It also creates a much tighter spring assembly so you don't get as much sag in the back whenever you're loading up a trailer or whatever you're going to be towing. Anyways guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and I'll talk to you again very soon.